Alright guys, Hatch Kramick again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Rostermania is expected after the Esports World Cup, but one of the big questions of the last few days is exactly who are the best players in the game? Who's going to take the victory in the breaking point top 20 of the season? Sib of the New York Subliners, now of course Cloud9, gives his perspective on the situation because he's been playing with Hydra this entire year and honestly gives so much praise to the ability this guy has, but says if there's one player in the entire game that can compare to Hydra and his level of talent, it is none other than Shotzi of Optic Tech says very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always this is Krim by the way again I mean look he's done it again he takes pole position for both races of yesterday and today he won yesterday's race I imagine by the time you guys are seeing this the second race is already going to be underway kind of interesting to see that they're doing the second race and then the solo endurance challenge tomorrow kind of interesting looks like the race here finished under safety car and um well Krim gets the dub again so that's going to be another sticker on the top of his Porsche a couple of quick things here on Black Ops 6. There was this talked about where in Black Ops 6 it seems like you can dive and melee at the same time. So there's, we saw this the other day where you can dive and shoot at the same time. So while you're in mid-air diving, you can fire your weapon. Certainly you can fire a sniper rifle bullet and I'm sure the, well, it can go anywhere at that point. It can go absolutely anywhere, but it may connect and it may be interesting. There is also this other feature where you can dive and if you have your knife in your hand, you can actually melee and potentially take someone out mid-air, especially because it's just a one hit kill. So so there are going to be some very interesting things happening in this game and I'm sure that Shotzi is absolutely ready for it. This is another pretty interesting thing here that Exclusive Ace did the analysis on. This is effectively time to kill with an SMG in each game. It does just go to show how different Black Ops 4 was in many ways as well. The way they designed that game was, well, it wasn't perfect for competitive play. To me, the stim shot was a bit of a problem that you could just regen health instantly, especially because it was 150 health and it took so many bullets to kill anyone. But it was a design decision by Treyarch to make Black Ops 4 far, like the time to kill was almost double any other COD that had come previously. And it was a decision made with the intention, I'm pretty sure, to make the game more competitive. I think that was the idea. You got to hit more bullets to get a kill. And that was absolutely the case. And people that shot straight were, um, well, were killing it on Black Ops 4. And those that didn't quite shoot as straight were having a much more difficult time. We went from that then back to MW19 with one of the fastest time to kills, you know, basically ever. And since then, it's been a bit up more up and down. To me, the Cold War time to kill is fine. I think, to me, honestly, Black Ops 4 time to kill was fine as well. It was just the stim shot that was a problem. But Cold War is okay, and um, it's actually pretty similar to what we currently have at MW3. So, but that's also a 150 health game. I don't really have a problem with the time to kill in this game. I think the Cold War time to kill was fine as well. And according to pre-beta data, we are going to see that Black Ops 6 is something relatively similar in that ballpark. So, I'm pretty happy with that. The time to kill is quite important, I think, in terms of making a good competitive game. The maps are probably the most important thing in making a good competitive game. So if they get those things right, we're probably going to be in a perfectly okay position. But let's talk about some of the top 20 stuff. Shotzi gets number four. The top four players of the season to me were absolutely in no doubt at all as to that it was going to be, in some order, Simp, Hydra, Scrappy. And then I think Shotzi was always probably going to be about fourth. Was... Over the course of the season, not as consistently mega as those other three guys were that I just mentioned, but he was still incredibly good. And in terms of like, you know, we talk about superstars, we talk about all that stuff, you know, we don't need to get into that conversation again today, but um, the numbers definitely speak for themselves. And even though the numbers speak for themselves, what really speaks for itself is when you actually watch the play. And especially his performance at the World Championship was just so good. Obviously, stage four was a bit of a rough one for him. Pred had a worse stage four. They won stage three and he played pretty well. But um, the World Championship, of course, he got the MVP as well. He honestly just got better and better additionally as the season progressed. And that was one of the most impressive things I thought for Shotzi. Number one aces in search and destroy. Number one highest half point KD in a grand final. Number one most half point kills in a series at 80, which is just absolutely absurd. And um, various other great stats here from Shotzi this season. So we are going to talk more about him in a second with what Sib had to say. But there's no doubt in anyone's mind this. This guy is one of the best players in the game and he proved it this season beyond any doubt and you know the eye test of Shotzi is unlike the eye test of really any other player in the game 
with the exception of maybe one man that we'll discuss in a second. Number three, though, goes to Scrappy. I know that many would potentially have tried to put him higher than this. To be honest, you can argue it so many different ways. In terms of, like, season MVP, Scrappy, to me, was, was right there. I will say, this year was, in many respects, the year of the SMGs. Yes, Scrappy's numbers were very nice, as they were, and as you'd expect for ARs, but if you look at the MVP winners this season, Kleenex was the MVP at Major 1, Simp was the MVP at Major 2, Schultzy got the MVP at Major 3, and then of course Hydra got the MVP at Major 4, so it's been all SMGs, and I think a lot of even people are saying now that it's difficult to win one of these awards, MVPs or whatever, as an AR player, because people tend to think, oh, well, the SMGs are more impactful and therefore they deserve the plaudits, which I think generally is true. But the fact that, you know, all the winners of the MVPs this season were SMG players, including Shotzi that then won the championship MVP as well, Scrappy maybe even deserves more credit than he gets because he was just so far ahead of basically any other AR player that it's almost ridiculous. And, um, you know, the numbers definitely play that out. You know, this guy might go down as the best AR, like, ever in the coming years. It's not out of the realms of possibility if he wins a World Championship or two. Because you look at the AR players. Krim was obviously an AR player at some point, but he ran the SMG as well. Karma was SMG AR. So, like, you look at the greatest ever. We talked about it earlier today. Krim was, you know, during his career, he flexed. Karma was the same, Skump was an SMG, and then you get to Clay and you get to Formal, who were AR players. I think there's a possibility that Scrap at the end of his career could go down in a similar situation to where, you know, Formal and Clay are. But if he wants to do that, he's got to be getting some rings on the board relatively soon, I would say. But I mean, look at his season cards. Like, this is so ridiculous. I know that, like, maybe he doesn't have the best AR duo in the world. Like, he's not teaming with Dashi, he's teaming with Insight, but Insight's still very good. I think Insight maybe gets under rated at times. And Kleenex and Envoy are great players as well. Like, it's not like it's just a one-man show, but sometimes it does look like a one-man show from Toronto. And without Scrappy, Toronto would, you know, be in a really difficult position, I would say. But his teammates are still very good, and they're, you know, champions in their own rights as well. Of course, Envoy is a world champion himself. But a 99-rated card every single stage, the only one that he didn't get was Champs, when he only had a 95 overall, which is, like, still kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, look at the impact. Yes, his KZ might not have been great at champs, but kills per 10, damage per 10, he was again purple. He was purple every stage. That's actually so impressive. Every single stage, including champs, he was purple in damage per 10 in control. So literally the best AR every single stage in that category, which is so rare to see. And he was highest in kills per 10 on four out of five occasions, just missed it back in stage one, but they won stage one, so who cares? Absolutely absurd. But of course, as a result, with the likes of, you know, Scrap performing like this, people say, oh, he should have been higher, you know, should have been number two, number one in the overall player rankings, and you can argue that, to be honest, but Simp and Hydra are going to be above him, that I'm sure we're going to see those outcomes today. But also, where could Scrappy go? Is there a possibility that he looks at the fact that, you know what, I have absolutely crushed it this year, and the Toronto team Yes, we won an event, but we, you know, weren't any closer this year to winning the World Championship than we were last year. Depending on what happens at the World Cup, Scrap might have a thought or two, because basically any team in the game would take Scrappy right now. With the exception of Optic, who of course aren't going to change their roster, every other team would not say no to Scrap in the same way that, like, who's saying no to Simp or who's saying no to Hydra if they want to join your team. As I say, only Optic are going to stick for sure, even if those options are on the table. Every other team would be in contention, I would say. But let's talk about some of those players in question, right? Because there's been talk about Shotzi, obviously, as of late. The fact that he won Major 3 MVP and he won the World Championship MVP. Sib has been talking about a fair few things over the last few days, certainly on his podcast with a Hatch was very interesting discussing various topics. We talked about the crowd angle yesterday, but he has some incredibly high praise for Hydra, especially. And this I thought was really interesting to hear it from a teammate's POV because we know how good Hydra is, but a lot of people that have played with him have played with him for, you know, a couple of years or whatever. Sib is new to seeing Hydra play and arguably Hydra is a better player now than he's ever been. This season, individually, statistically, was probably not quite as good as last season for Hydra where he was like above and beyond the best player in the game, but it wasn't far off and it was actually probably very similar Hydra's performance this year to last year. And 
I would say his like decision making and his play style and some other factors are even getting better year on year. I think part of that is good coaching. The fact that subliners, Cloud9, they have Dereal, they have um, Sender, right, doing the work over there. I think they're helping Hydra get better year on year and use his talent to levels that we've just not really seen before. And that's what Sib says. And even after the clip that I share, Sib made a very interesting comment that was, as much as it disappoints me to admit that somebody's better than me, sometimes you've just got to admit that, like, someone's just built different. Yeah, my experience with Paco has been fucking wonderful. Definitely more than I expected. I knew he was always great. I knew he was good. I knew he got MVP. Um, but just to kind of pick his brain and be with him firsthand and how he thinks about the game and his mindset towards the game, I think um, it's that's why he's so good mm. as what he what he does. Um, I know he doesn't like streaming just because I mean he doesn't really want to teach and you know he just you know some people they just they want to be professional and just play the game. Um, you don't really see um, there's some athletes who are the top of their their respect sport and you know they really don't they don't you don't really see them on skims or like you know like doing a bunch of ads <laughs> yeah of course stuff. so like they just want yeah to, you know, they trying to go there and hoop or go exactly, there and play the exactly, game exactly right so I think yeah. that's kind of similar to him but as far as playing with him I mean it, it, his point of view I mean there's only there's only two players that can really replicate. How he plays and i mean it's, it's him and shots yeah him and shots have like I similar think, looking point of views but yeah different so, from everyone that's ever played exactly right so i think like really looking at what they're doing really puts it in perspective of how okay like people are some people are just different yeah like there's no like you can try your best to replicate it <laughs> yeah I can try my best to move like him or but in reality like it, they're just different yeah it's just and second that, nature to them now like it's you know instinct. what i mean that that's just that's that's a gift that they're born with and not everybody no no not and nobody can do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody, except for those not, two. not every no yeah. nobody can replicate that nobody can be like that and yeah that really just puts in a perspective of like other sports like Messi or like Kyrie irving or like just like people who have their their gifts like Steph Curry he shoots amazingly like Kyrie Irving his handles right it's like some people who are just like that you can really tell like wow like they, they they're they're just gifted and I sometimes God made you better and that's okay <laughs> yeah you know what I mean like at the end of the day sometimes God made you better and that's just what it is so coming from a guy like Sib, who has utmost confidence in his own abilities, those words there on Hydra, I thought were incredibly high praise. And basically just saying, yeah, this guy is absolute like God amongst men walking on water when he's playing Call of Duty. And, you know, thinking of him as a completely different caliber of player to like anyone that he's ever played with. But then he says, if there's anyone that I can compare him to, if there's any 1A, 1B, it's Shotzi, right? And um, that, I mean, that's quite a high praise as well. I do think that when you analyze those top players, the simps of the world, the hydras of this world, the shotties of this world, certainly on the SMG perspective. Hydra, they all have slightly different play styles. Like Shotzi and Hydra don't play the same way, but in terms of like ability and crosshair placement and like just pure talent, I mean, Sib's looking at Hydra and Shotzi being number one, number two, which is kind of like, in, I mean, obviously he would also give high praise to Simp as well. But the fact that Simp for years has been considered in that conversation as like the most talented ever, and he, I definitely think that he is. Like Simp's gun skill and crosshair placement, like it's no um, levels below, I don't think, the likes of Hydra. But I just think you see it slightly differently from Simp. Simp's kind of more well known for his like awareness and his ability to understand when to play fast, when to play slower, when to make certain plays. I just think it's a really exciting point for the league to be in, where we have Simp on Phase, we have Hydra on as it's going to be Cloud9, we have Shotzi on Optic, of course, Scrappy on Toronto, like we have all these absolute superstars, and you can argue various ways on who's better on certain days, certain people would argue a different way, like... You know, if you did a poll or something, and okay, there's always going to be some sort of optic bias for Shotzi, but if you said who's the best player in the game or the most talented player in the game between those four guys I mentioned, 
I think the vote would be pretty split in the community. And the great thing is for now that they're all on different teams. That might not last forever. But while they are on different teams, I think it has helped create this environment where we have four teams that can all contend for championship wins and all literally did win championships this season. But as I say, depending on the way the World Cup goes, that may not necessarily last forever. So intrigue your thoughts in the comments. I've mentioned before and a couple of times in this video already, the Cloud9 New York stuff. We talked about it earlier on today. And look, I made my points clear on this yesterday. I don't hate the idea of a team having a city in their name because if they actually want to take advantage of that idea of geolocation like Toronto have done a good job building a local fan base and community in you know in Toronto itself but I think one of the arguments that Charlie makes here is that for most teams it doesn't make sense because they actually don't play in that city right like you know New York for example they're not even based in New York they were year one but now they're based in Dallas like basically every other team so um, if your team is based in your city like Toronto or even FaZe with Atlanta I'm pretty sure they're based out there then fine it works if you run events in your city which FaZe don't but for most other teams I don't think it works or is even necessary I think that's kind of the point that most people are trying to get across so um, yeah I'd like to see a return to a world where teams can do what they want if you want to be Toronto Ultra fine but if you want to be up to game that should be fine as well. So hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Damn, they all got out. On me, on me, on me, on me. There, there. Where, where? I'm dead. Yeah, I'm top value though, or top teddy. Fuck, one shot the window, bro. Bro, this is hella good right here, bro. Like... Who's shooting me? <laughs> Don't die, bro. That's all I'm saying, bro. Oh, oh god, yeah. god, that was the guy shooting me, bro. Good. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. They all lined up.